So far, we've looked at how we can create materials by just setting these sliders. But because this means we've set only one single value, it results in the material being uniform for each of these properties. So the, the roughness, for example, is the same across the entire model because we've set one value. Now, in reality, these individual parameters are going to vary across the object. So to emulate that, we need to plug something into these sockets that can supply a varying value between 0 and 1. And to do that, we can plug in either an image texture or a procedural texture. So let's look at procedural textures. And to demonstrate this, I'll use a single plane, so Shift-A, and we'll choose a plane. And I'll just rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis. And we'll isolate it by pressing forward slash on the numpad. So we've got this object. We'll give it a new material. We can either do that in the shader panel, or we can do it in the material panel down here. So I'll do it over here. Now we've got this new material. I'll set this to be a mirror. So we'll turn it to metallic, and we'll turn roughness down to zero. So zero is fully glossy. One is fully rough. So we're going to add something to control this roughness. So Shift A, and we'll look under the texture panel, and we're going to go with a Musgrave texture. Now in Blender 4, you've no longer got the Musgrave texture. It's been consolidated into the noise texture. All the same options are there. It's just been put into one node. So in Blender 4, choose noise texture instead. So Musgrave texture in this case, and I'll plug this directly into the material output so we can see what this looks like. Control shift click on it, and now we can see it's given us this result. We've got a black and white image, which we can now plug in here so that the black areas of the image will be completely reflective, and the white areas will be completely rough. So let's look at the options we've got on this Musgrave texture, or the noise texture in Blender 4. So the scale, if we turn the scale down, is going to make the noise larger. Turn it up, it's going to make it smaller. I'll set this to 1. In fact, we'll go with 2. The detail is how many layers of noise you've got. So let's turn this up to maybe 15. We can't really see much difference at the moment because we've not got sufficient contrast. So we'll turn the dimension down. And in Blender 4, as I'll show you in a second, it's a little bit different. But the dimension value prior to Blender 4 will change the contrast. So we'll turn this down. We're going to get much more contrast, so we get much more detailed noise. And this is where we can see the effect of the detail. If I turn the detail down, you can see more clearly what that's doing. So the more octaves of noise, the more details we're going to get, but only if we've, if we've reduced the dimension. Turn the dimension up, and it's going to become quite... It's going to smooth it out, basically. It's become less contrasty. And then lastly, we've got the lacinarity, which changes the scale of the every every two layers of noise will adjust based on this will, will adjust in scale based on what you put in here so if i turn this down you'll see it's becoming much larger turn it up and it's becoming much smaller okay now let's have a quick look at blender 4. so in blender 4 we'll do the same we'll add a as i said before a noise texture and we'll look at the differences We'll isolate it with Control shift click And then the first thing you're going to notice is that the color is no longer as, there's less areas of black. And this is because we've now got a normalize option. And normalize means it will change the value from whatever it is to zero to one. And the Musgrave texture outputs a value of negative one to positive one. So if we turn this off, we're going to get the same result we had in Blender below version four. So it's going to be outputting a negative number to a positive number. Negative one, positive one. So I'm going to leave this turned off. I recommend you do that if you want to get the same result as me. And we'll just look at the differences now. The only differences we've got are, besides the normalize, we've now got roughness instead of dimension. And dimension, you would turn it down to get more contrast. But it's the opposite for the roughness. You turn it up, like so. And if we turn the detail up, we'll get a similar result to before. And something else we didn't have on the old Musgrave texture is the distortion. So we can now distort the texture as well. Quite handy. So back in Blender 3.67, let's have a look at one of the problems you're going to get if you're using this earlier version. So I'm just going to turn the detail down so we've got a more obvious example of what the problem is. If, I, if you just pay attention, let me turn the scale down as well. Turn that up. So we've got this big black area and we've got this big white area. 
Now, if I plug this into the roughness, you'd expect the black area to be fully reflective and the white area is going to be rough. Now, look, watch what happens if I plug this in. That big black area has actually become rough. And the reason for this is it's a bit of a strange, I don't know if it's a bug or it's just an improvement in Blender 4, but where it's negative one, it's showing up as rough. Because don't forget, this is going from negative one to one. So what we need to do to fix it in Blender below version four is clamp it basically. So we can do it in a number of ways. We can shift A, if we search for a ramp, this will clamp it for us. So this will clamp it from zero to one. And now where it was black before on here, it's now black on there. So it's looking correct as you would expect on the roughness. Another way you could do that is with a, a range node. So shift A and we'll search for a, a map range. And what this does, well, firstly, it's got the clamp option, so it's going to clamp it for us based on the zero to one maximum. But what it's also useful for, as you've probably noticed, is that some of these options don't go from zero to one. So the IOR, for example, can go as high as you want. So in that instance, what you would do is you could use a map range node to change the value to a different range. So I know that this is going from negative one to positive one. So I'll put this in here, negative one. To positive one and now that's remapped it to go from zero to one so we're seeing the full normalized range of noise there and we can turn clamp on and off now it's not going to make any difference because it's been re it's been remapped for those values to go from negative one to one to negative uh, to zero to one and now i can change this to whatever i want so let's say i want to change it to 1.4 we could now plug this into over here and wherever this is output in white, we're now going to be getting 1.4 for the subsurface IOR, because that's what we've changed that range to. So it's useful to know that, and we'll get rid of it for now. So we'll delete that and put this one back in. And in Blender 4, we don't actually have that issue. So let me just quickly replicate what we had set up before. And now let's look, just pay attention to where the roughness is the roughness and reflective areas are and we'll look at the noise texture and you can see it's it's exactly as it shows us in the viewport so they've improved something in the principal bsdf node that it must auto clamp the values that are coming in I'll put that back in that's one less thing you need to worry about in blender 4. so i'll just make this a little bit more detailed turn the detail back up and the dimension down so we've got the pattern all over the mirror now what happens if you want to, you want a big black area here, you can't really have any fine control over, what, over how it's placed using just these parameters on the noise texture or the Musgrave texture. So what we'll need to do instead is mix it, mix this result with another noise or a, another texture or something you've painted manually using a mix node. So Shift A, and we'll search for a mix node. We'll go with mix color. And we're going to drop this on here. Now the mix node works with the factor. So we've got two inputs. Let's set this one to black. So we've got two inputs, A and B. So currently A is the Musgrave texture and B I've just set to be a value of zero. So this is basically black, which means if this was going to the roughness, it would be completely mirror-like. And the factor is what slides between either A or B. So if I change the factor to zero, we get in the top socket completely. So again, the Musgrave texture. If I was to slide this to the right, the one, now we're getting completely black being passed out of this node. So it's completely reflective. What I want to do is drive this again with another texture, either procedural or an image. So Shift A, and this time I'll go with just a, a normal noise, a normal noise texture. Drop this in, and we can now set this noise texture up. We'll control shift click on it to isolate it. And we can change these parameters to get over we want. Turn the detail down, let the roughness down. And we're not going to get a very good result currently. Let me plug this into the factor. So don't forget the black areas of this are going to be getting the top socket, and the white areas of this noise texture will make this mix node output the bottom socket. So I'll plug this into the factor, and we'll have a look at the result by isolating the mix node. 
We can't really see much of an impact being made by this. And that's because if we just isolate this again, there's insufficient contrast. And to fix that, what we'll do, let's plug this one back in. We'll do Shift A. Let's isolate this one, in fact. We'll do Shift A and we'll add a ramp again. So we can either add a new ramp or we can choose this one and press Shift D and move it down and just drag it over the wire that we want it to affect. So plug it into this one. Let's go into the material output. Now we can increase the black areas by moving this black one to the right. And we can make the white areas brighter by moving the white one to the left. And what this means is, if I now connect this into the factor instead of this one, I'm going to get a much more obvious result. So plug that into the factor. And now we'll look at this mix and just pay attention to where it's white. There's a big black area there. Plug this in. That big black area is making sure that the top socket is used and the white areas are used in the bottom socket. So now if we connect this BSDF back in, you can see we've controlled the placement of one texture using another one. And we can modify the noise and it will all update in real time. So we can change all the parameters on this one to modify that. Now let's say in the areas that are fully reflective because of this fact, this color ramp output in white, I might want to sort of mix in a bit of that top socket instead so it's not completely using the bottom socket. And to do that, I can just change the value of that white slider, but just bring that down a bit so it's got a bit more black to it. It's going to be using a little bit of that top socket, which will introduce a little bit of that musgrave texture. Let's turn this back to white. And the same goes for the black. So if this is too rough for us, we could say, right, I want to bring in a little, where, where this image is black, I'd like to bring in a little bit of white so we get some of that bottom socket brought in, which will make these areas where it's black a little bit less black. So in effect, this will be outputting a little bit more of the bottom socket. So even these areas are going to be a little bit less rough and more reflective, if that makes sense. So we click on this one and now I'll just increase the value. If I zoom in over here, as I increase the value of this black slider, it's going to cause the mix node to output a little bit more of that bottom socket. So it'll become a little bit less rough and a bit more glossy. The, the, if it's completely black, it's probably going to be better for damage. Whereas if you put it up a bit, it's looking a bit more like a smudge. Good for things like fingerprints and things like that. And if you wanted to, we could use the output of this mix node to drive the base color. So let's say I want this to be more like damaged rust on the mirror. But let's just make this black, black again, so we get more visibility. If I don't want it to be the same color, I might want this to be orange where it's rusty. We can now add another mixed color. So we'll shift D, copy this one, and I'll plug the result of this one into this factor, and I'll plug this into the base color. Now you can see, because this one is outputting, where it's outputting white, it's going to get the bottom socket. So basically, wherever this is dirty it's going to get the bottom one and where it's not it's going to get the top one which is white I'll plug that back in if i make this bottom one brown now let's turn the value up a little bit make it more red more orangey you can see we've now got that rust effect just by reusing the nodes we've created here for the roughness or we could make it a blue mirror so where where it's shiny we could change this to blue. And now we've got a blue mirror or a red mirror, etc. So before moving on to the next section, what I'd recommend you do is create yourself an object. Maybe a UV sphere would be a good choice. And then to make it nice and smooth, you can right click it and choose shade smooth. And to make it a little bit more geometry, you can just press control two on the keyboard and that will automatically create you a subdivision modifier with two levels, which basically gives you a little bit more geometry, so it's gonna look much smoother. After you've done that, create a new material, and then try creating a variety of different materials using the parameters that we've gone through. And then once you've got the material created, you can then use the noise textures and things to modify 
these values so you've not got one value across the entire model. And also, Shift A, go into the textures panel and try out all these different textures we've got. And if you do struggle to um, you know, understand what the options are, which is understandable, then go into the help menu and you can click on the manual and that'll bring up the blender manual and then you can do a search at the top, whichever thing you're looking for. One thing to note as well, while we're talking about the help manual, is that any options, usually, if you hover over it with your mouse and press F1, it will usually open the user manual to that particular topic. So once you're happy with that and you've made a few materials, maybe a rubber, plastic, metals, um, a glass, things like that, then we'll move on to the next section where we'll look at using pre-built texture libraries to automatically build materials.